Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and in this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. We have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. During the previous days the Ukrainians made an attempt to kill the ex, the former mayor, the former mayor of the town by the name of Kupensk. Uh, he was the mayor of this of that settlement when the settlement was under control of Russian Federation. Uh, that, as I understand, the, uh, the former mayor was was wounded but he managed to survive and currently he's in hospital now let's move uh, to um, uh, to Kharkiv uh, situation on the ground we have additional updates about the uh, training process about the mobilization and training process uh, on the territory of Ukraine on these photos you can see the soldiers of 43rd mechanized brigade the soldiers that are currently passing the trainings in some training centers in the vicinity of Kharkiv as you can see all these people are are very old very old and this is the quality of Ukraine army these are the soldiers whose main purpose is to stop the Russian offensive in the northern direction now let's move to the situation on the ground we have additional updates the Russian sources more precisely the group of forces north stated that Ukrainians during the previous date made more attempts to attack the Russian forces in Gluboka but most of those attacks were repelled by the Russians the Ukrainians suffered losses and were forced to fall back also the Russians reported that they managed to advance further in the direction of Zelenium. The Russians captured two, two strategical hills on this area and made positions and made Ukrainian positions in this area less comfortable. Now let's move to Volchansk. We have a lot of updates from this territory and they are quite opposite. For example, the Russians are saying that they continue offensive operation and they continue assault of Volchansk aggregate plant and that during the previous day the Russians managed to establish control over few more buildings two or three more buildings inside of this industrial zone and also the Russians are saying that Ukrainians during the day tried to counterattack the Russians in the vicinity of the central park so somewhere here trying to counterattack the Russian positions and try not to allow the Russians to split this territory in two parts as you can see very difficult and very opposite updates it's very difficult to understand what exactly is happening here also the russians reported that ukrainians made few attempts to counterattack the russians in the eastern direction all those attacks were repelled by the russians ukrainians suffered losses and were forced to fall back another important statement by the group of fourth east north is that the ukrainian plans to start to begin the counteroffensive was broken right before the ukrainians were planning to begin offensive operation or counter-offensive operation the Russians reported that they destroyed the bridge uh, let's say along this water reserve this is um, this is uh, a Seversky Donetsk river and there is like as we discussed in the previous videos there is a dam and the dam was destroyed once again currently we don't have any videos confirming this but this information also was confirmed by the mayor by the let's say not the mayor but the head of military administration of Kharkiv today yesterday he was interviewed and he reported he confirmed that the dam the bridge uh, the road was uh, once again destroyed by the Russians and due to that fact the Ukrainian decided to move their plans for counter-attacks also we have updates that during the previous 24 hours the Russians conducted significant number of Lancet strikes the Russians destroyed few more additional artillery systems howitzers the Ukrainians lost suffered significant losses up to one battalion they lost and without any changes on the ground now let's move to the north in Kupin's direction we have interesting updates from this area as well after a very short preparation the Russians start began offensive operation uh, on the line Kislovka Katlarovka to Stepova Novoselovka that attack was repul repulsed by the Ukrainians the Ukrainians shown us the video of how they were FPV droning the Russian tanks the Russian personnel the Russian let's say, soldiers in this area and the attack was stopped almost at the beginning of the gray zone so for now no progress from the Russian side now let's move further in the case of Sivir's direction we have a lot of very interesting updates uh, the Russians continue counter artillery duels few more artillery systems of armed forces of Ukraine were destroyed as a result of Lancet strikes and as a result of um, Krasnopolis strikes and counter artillery duel strikes but the most interesting updates are coming from Razdolovka during the previous 24 hours we got the first updates the first videos confirming that the Russians may 
made an attempt to attack this uh, town from the south. We have, uh, let's say, geolocation the videos that was published by the Ukrainian sources. On this video, we can see the Russians were moving from the southwest and from the southeast. Those attacks, according to Ukrainian sources, were repelled by the Ukrainians. So, if we summarize everything, the Russians were moving something like this, trying to get in direction of Razdolovka railway station, and another wave of attack took place from this direction. So as you can see, the Russians were moving like this, and the Russians were moving like this, and those two attacks were repelled by the Ukrainians, and that was probably the first wave. Most likely during the next few days, we're going to receive more updates and more attempts to attack from the Russian side. And I'll remind you that according to information we have, according to different mappers, not mappers, according to different military experts, some of them are the military experts on the ground, the Russians during the previous few days, few weeks more precisely, uh, managed to Establish complete control over these fields and as you can see the Russians managed to half encircle Razdolovka already so we can start counting days probably before Razdolovka falls. Now let's move to Shasavyar. we have additional updates and mainly just the posts uh, just telegram posts and just uh, changes on map according to information we have from the sources on the ground uh, the sources on the ground confirmed that the Russians captured completely the eastern part of the eastern chest of Yar and now the Ukrainians have their positions just in the most western part of the eastern chest of Yar and we are talking about this stronghold currently uh, we don't know for sure whether the Ukrainians are going to hold this area for a very long time or they're just uh, using this territory for the concentration of forces not even for concentration is something like something uh, like a middle part before before the complete uh, let's say withdrawing their positions because the, this also night the previous night we got reports that the Russians made first attempts to attack the Ukrainian forces in the citadel currently we don't know for sure whether the Russians managed to achieve some results or not but uh, anyway the battle is going to be very difficult if Ukrainians decide to stay there but if they decide to stay there they're going to be let's say those uh, soldiers who decide to stay there of course will stay there forever additional updates we received from Klishevka according to the Russian sources the Ukrainians made uh, conducted few counter-attacks uh, in direction of the village and as a result of those counter-attacks the Ukrainians managed to restore some positions currently we don't know for sure uh, let's say we don't know exa exact area that the Ukrainians managed to restore control over so for now we're not going to change the map just report that was published published during the previous night. Now let's move to, uh, let's say, Avdiivka. Concerning the situation in Sokol, we haven't received additional updates whether the Russians managed to improve their positions or whether the Ukrainians managed to counterattack. The territory is covered with the fog of war. This update we made based on the yesterday clashes between two armored vehicles and for now no changes, no updates uh, we haven't received. Now we are moving to South Donetsk direction. We have additional updates from this territory. The Russians during the previous night conducted, uh, let's say, few missile strikes on Kurahovo power plant. The Ukrainians were using this territory as the warehouse, the ammo depots. There were heavy explosions with the secondary detonation. Most likely, the Ukrainians suffered significant losses. For now, we don't have exact numbers, but we're going to receive them very soon, as I understand. Now let's talk about Konstantinovka, uh, Vladimirovka, Uglida direction according to pro-ukrainian mappers the russians managed to improve their positions and currently this territory according to deep state mappers were, is already under complete russian control so this artillery pocket was cut off by the russians during the previous weeks of clashes and this is another significant progress towards the road 0524 the russians are going to get this road with these updates with this speed very soon furthermore we got additional videos of casualties among the Ukrainian personnel somewhere here as a result of clashes with Russian forces. We haven't received anything from the uh, Vremyevka tactical bridgehead as well as uh, nothing from uh, the uh, Rabotina and Zaporozhye area. Kherson also nothing to talk about. Interesting report we got from the Ministry of Defense. Uh, according to the Russians, five unmanned boats of the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed uh, in, the, in the area of the Black Sea. So the Ukrainians continue attempts to attack the
the Russian fleet. We know that every, every single day the Western, the NATO, uh, let's say, Global Hawk is flying above this area, trying to discover the positions of Russian fleet. When talking about fleet, we have very interesting details from the Baltic Sea. Uh, according to information we have, NATO's premier annual maritime exercise Baltic Operations 24 kicked off. Two, 20 allies, 50 plus ships, 85 aircrafts, 9,000 9, personnel, largest assembled fleet of amphibious and my countermeasure forces in Baltops 24 history, right next to Russian naval base in at Kaliningrad. So the biggest, uh, the biggest, um, let's say, navy exercises, military exercises, uh, has begun. And uh, uh, most important fact, interesting detail that. Uh, also, according to information we have, American B-52 bombers simulated a nuclear attack on the Kaliningrad region. A U.S. Air Force B-52H uh, strat uh, Stratofortress strategic bomber took off from the United Kingdom and participated um, uh, reaching the nuclear launch line in Kaliningrad. So very, very interesting exercises. We see another wave of escalation and probably uh, the uh, Russians sent their fleet to Cuba and Russians, let's say, sent fleet to the Cuba was respond to these military exercises. And that's it for the short video. Military Summary Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye bye.